Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're on tour with Unleashed and Carnifax, and we're having a, a, a great time, actually. We have no problems. Everybody's mellow, and there's no issues or anything like that. Everything's really smooth. So we're excited, but I mean, we got, still got three more weeks to go, so we'll see. <laughs> These guys might start acting up there. Cinder from Unleashed got a little upset because we drank more than we <laughs> no, I will attest that did not happen. The only thing I have problem is Ralph's <laughs> cough. <and> that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my only problem. Otherwise, it's <laughs> totally <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Go down and buy bunk all the time. Um, what kind of uh, bass equipment do you use, and what brands do you uh, prefer and recommend? Uh, for bass, I've, o- I've always used the Fender. Fender precision bass for Fender jazz bass. I've always used an amp. I use an amp peg. The straight classic amp peg SVT. It's the best thing, just straight through, clean, no distortion, no bullshit on it. And I use like a little DI box called the uh, Sans Amp. It's just like a little pedal that I use. But I'm pretty basic, and that's the, one, yeah. the kind of amp and guitar I would have recommend. Nothing else? Well, what if something breaks down in the middle of tour? Do you have back? Well, yeah, I got like two in Fender bases with me, and I got two heads for my amp peg and a couple cabinets. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, how, how did you get involved in Obituary? You weren't there for the very beginning. No, no. I actually went and saw them play a show in uh, Tampa with Morbid Angel. And uh, some friend of mine said they needed a bass player. And the next thing you know, I just started talking to them. I called them up a couple of times. You know, back then there was no cell phones or emails or anything like that, so you couldn't get a hold of them really easy. So it took me a couple of months, but I finally got an audition. I joined, and a couple of months later, we went on tour. We toured the Sacred Right. Uh, and uh, was that one of your first tours? Or? First tour I ever did. Well, actually, I did a tour before with a band called Hellwitch. We did a tour like around South uh, the United States with Death and the Dark Angel, like 1987 or 88, something like that. Exactly. Long time ago, yeah, long time ago. But yeah, uh-huh. but yeah, that was my first tour to take a right, go Sweet. Um, what bands inspired you to uh, play music, and who's influenced you in the most ways? Um, and pretty much on every, all kinds of music, <coughs> country music, rock, you know, my mom, when I grew up, I was listening to Elvis Presley and all the kind of doo-wop stuff, so that influenced me to kind of have a little bit more of a sense of the types of music, classical music, my stepfather was into country music, and then just over years, listening to more heavy or more extreme stuff, ACDC, that kind of put me into punk rock and hardcore, and then I got into like real heavy death metal and stuff like that, so a lot of different stuff, a lot of Punk or hardcore band? Oh, yeah. Um, Bad Brains, big influence for me, especially playing bass. Daryl Jennifer, I think, is probably one of the greatest hardcore bass players that's ever lived. And it's still alive. And, um, and Mike Dean mm-hmm. from Corrigan Performity was a big influence on me. I listened to him a lot. And uh, Mickey from <coughs> Offenders. The Offenders was like an old punk band. Mickey Offender, he played DRI and bands like that. So I was big into DRI. SOD and all that kind of shit. Um, do you have any part in writing music for Imagery? No, no, no. Pretty much all our stuff's written by our guitar player and our drummer. And then we kind of all get together and learn everything, put it together, record it. And uh, yeah, I've never written anything like that. Help them out in any kind of aspect I can. It, it all started just helping fans that I know out, and I just kind of realized I should start like making this more of a legit business. Yeah, um, <coughs> I was wondering what made you decide to uh, start working with mainly underground bands. And yeah, because kids that I know on the scene and kids that I like like their band, I respect what they're doing, and I'm like trying to show them the right way. You know, these, some of these kids are like 19, 20 years old, and they really don't know what they're doing as far as writing a record contract. And, I know I, we've seen it when we signed a label in 1990, we had no idea we were signing. All we knew was we were a band and we wanted to go on tour and we wanted to sell records, so we signed whatever the hell we signed. You know? And uh, to this day, we don't own a lot of our music, a lot of the stuff we can't really figure out how we got paid on it and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to start bands and guide them from the beginning so they don't have to go through any of that shit. And luckily, we've been around 20 years. So we've kind of let it work and we evolved into learning what we're doing. but. A lot of bands only have so much of a lifetime. So I'm gonna have fun. That's really kind of you. Death metal musician is a big soft chart, eh? Hey? <laughs> um, can you explain more about Back from the Dead and your role in it exactly? Well, 
Well, and like I said, I mean, I'm just like helping these bands out with getting record contracts. I haven't really like made money from it or anything. It's just like a hobby for me right now, I guess you could say. And it's, you know, it's eventually going to start working out well because the band signed a label. So the money's starting to come in for that. And you got tours coming up. I'm just going to kind of guide people in their career and see how they go. Um, when did, uh, exactly did you start Back from the Dead? Was that um, the title of it inspired by the obituary album? Or yeah, yeah, totally. Person? Yeah, from the obituary album, yeah. I just, I'm stupid with names. I can't come up with it to save my <laughs> life. I had a mortgage company and I called it Nationwide Capital Mortgage because it just sounded like something you've heard before. And Back from the Dead sounds like something you've heard. And when I put something in my mind and I make it legitimate, like I make a corporation out of it and I start it, then I really start working at it and doing it. So just kind of my process of like starting business. All right, sweet. Well, um, well, has there uh, been any bands that have like made it pretty well come well, out coming, from the dead? I got stuff coming. The band called Swats from Tampa. The record should come out uh, like February, April of oh, 2009. Yeah. Uh, check them out on MySpace yeah. slash Swats. Yes, they're pretty brutal, grindcore, crazy. I mean, they're gonna. I think they're gonna make a little bit of a change, like a lot of the stuff that's out there now. Something wrong with the singer looks like Phil Fletcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brutal you as hell. Watkins. The brutal as hell. And another band from New York called Marauder. I've been working with a lot. They're like an old '90s kind of metalcore band. Yeah, and they got an album coming up next year too. So that's all starting to come together. And I've got a few other smaller bands I'm working with. I'm messing around with a band called Secret She Kept. Gainesville, the black metal band, and uh, you know I get my hands on a lot of different stuff. It's coming together. Slow process. Slow process. Yeah. I'll leave you to play into that. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, I know things are going to work out better, and I'm, I mean I don't know how long I'm going to be playing eventually. So at least maybe I can keep myself planted in the music industry somehow. Okay, that sounds amazing. You're doing a wonderful thing with Back to the Dead Projections. I want to give you uh, some props on that.